Coming up on today's programme, these retired empty nesters are desperate to sell and move closer to their family. I want to be near to my grandsons who can pop into me after school while my daughters are work. Sophie battles a kaleidoscope of colours and patterns. Blue shag carpet, gold curtains and lots of different patterns. And I tackle the agent's numbers game, which has seen our homeowner do 92 viewings, all on her own. It got very stressful towards the end. is nestled in a corner of South East London, close to good schools, shops, parks and only a 20-minute train ride into the centre of town. Today's unsellable is a well-maintained end of terrace with three bedrooms and a beautiful garden. It was first listed at £225,000, but after a massive 16 months on the market and a whopping 92 viewings, the price has dropped to £212,000. So I'm going to go in for the 93rd viewing to get an idea of what potential buyers are seeing when they walk through the front door. And I'm going to talk to local people and find out what we have to do to make somebody commit to buying this house. Meet Betty and Ron Andrews. They've lived in their London end of terrace house for 33 years. But as they've got older, the stairs have become a problem. Recently, I've suffered a lot of Arthritis. Getting up and down the stairs has been a great problem for me, so I'm having to grow onto the banister. I have pains in my back at times. We are managing all right, but we would be better off without stairs, frankly. <laughs> and with daughter Gillian now living in Kent, they want to be closer to her and her family. I want very much to be near to my grandsons who can pop into me after school while my daughters are work. I would look forward to that very much. <laughs> and Gillian's desperate to have them nearby too. My parents, even though they're fairly ill, do all sorts of things for me. If they moved closer to me, then I would be able to repay their kindness by, by helping them out, doing their shopping, you know, or if they're not feeling well, popping round. What isn't helping at all is that Betty has been doing the viewings herself. No, I said, no, I was quite willing to do it. I didn't realise it would go on for such a long while. Sometimes uh, they've had phone calls from the estate agents where they've had five, ten minutes' notice, so she's rushed around, and they are both elderly now, and really they could do without the hassle. It got very stressful towards the end. And one family turned up with seven of them, and they were all over the house. 16 months and 92 viewings have taken it out of both of them. They're desperate and disheartened. So I thought we'd have to resign ourselves to stay here. <laughs> We've got no option. So what is stopping Ron and Betty's house moving off the market? Time for me to find out. Oh, crikey, what is that next door? Now, that's always going to put a potential buyer off. Definitely seen nicer carpets, very worn. And the wallpaper is pure 80s. This room screams update me. Maybe it's the funny ornaments, the display cabinet with crystal and carriage clock. Blue shag carpet, gold curtains, and lots of different patterns. All those patterns make me feel like I'm looking through a kaleidoscope. I need to close my eyes for a bit so that I don't fall up the stairs. It's a really nice size second bedroom, but the problem I have is with all these different colors. I mean, you've got purple, gold, but pink, orange, mustard, it's just its very garish and quite dated. It's an interesting colour palette which makes a potentially double room feel absolutely tiny. Never seen a, um, a pull-out bed act as a bedside table before. Ingenious. And the third bedroom is, well, basically lacking a bed. But for a box room, it's certainly not lacking boxes or eye-catching features. This is the most extraordinary carpet I've ever seen. I think it's like, like a tiger or something. 
Haven't seen a cork wall in a very, very, very long time. All it needs is a dartboard and it could be the snug at your local. 190! 30 years ago, this was a family home, but now the family has moved out. And though the house is still well loved and lived in, it needs to move into the 21st century. This house would be perfect for a young family, but the fact is the majority of people are not going to be able to see past their interior. There's enough shag pile carpet in that house to sink a ship, and cork walls? That's going to send most people running for the hills. In its current state, this house is unsellable. Before I meet Ron and Betty's estate agent to find out why, after 92 viewings, the house hasn't been snapped up, I'm going to have a nose around the area. Grove Park is a southeastern suburb of London. It's close to Bromley's bustling high street and a new leisure centre. With its fast transport links into central London and out to the countryside, it's perfect for a family who want quick access to the city centre and away days. It's an affordable location that should be popular with young families who are keen to get on the property ladder. This should be the target market for the house. Let's hope Sophie can talk Ron and Betty into a bit of modernisation. Tell me about this room. Well, that's was my son's room. Right. Is he responsible for the cork walls? Yes. Time to find out who's responsible for this carpet, though. Betty, did your son choose the carpet? No, it, uh, it was uh, a very old one my husband bought. Reminds me of a tiger. It wasn't my idea, but... <laughs> I think Ron and his son were trying to build a public bar in Betty's house. But before we call time on the room, it needs a sense of purpose. So you think a young family's probably going to move in here? I would hope so. I think a young family might be looking for a bit more of a sort of contemporary look. Yes. Things like shag pile carpets, they're of another decade. There's quite a lot of visual distractions. Yes, yes. Who is the pink man? Uh, it's uh, a present from my son. <laughs> the head shakes and yep. the body shakes. Yeah. This house needs to be designed to grab the buyers it's aimed at. A young family should walk in and hear the room shout, move in straight away, not run away. After 33 years, this house holds lots of memories and heaps of knickknacks. It needs some serious decluttering. Do we have your permission yeah. to, to, to start yes. work? Yes, certainly. Betty's on board, but there's plenty to crack on with. Before I meet Ron and Betty's agent, I'm going to talk to the locals. Grove Park looks like a good place to be, but I want to know what it's really like to live here. What do you like about it? You've got co-op down the bottom, you've got Bromley, you've got Lewisham, you've got Catford. Yeah. So you've got some good shops around here. Yeah, very nice area. What do you like about it? Um, I like the people. I think it's a lovely area. Yeah, the butchers is very good over the road there. It's very good. I and mean, then you've got your chemist and all that. So have you lived here a long time? 20 years. 20 years? The uh, leisure centre is absolutely lovely. Well, now I've heard it firsthand. A neighbourhood feel to a near London location without too hefty a price tag. So this is when we start taking away the personal effects, so we kind of have more of a blank canvas for buyers. Yeah. Now for the bit I love the best, decluttering. Once Ron and Betty have got rid of some of their knickknacks and unused furniture, I'll be able to see the house's full potential and to start on a design plan. Well, Alexander, be careful. If you've lived in a house for over 30 years, the chances are that you'll have accumulated a lot of clutter. So Betty and Ron have called in the troops, Gillian and their grandsons to help. Don't drop anything. Hello. Just wondering what to take out next. A top tip is to remove anything that's too dated or too personal. What are we going to do about the clock? Leave it there, take it out. Oh. Time's up. And time is up on any unused furniture like this fold-up bed. Come on, then. In you go. I'll be pleased to see the back of this day bed. 
Already I'm starting to see the house's potential and I can get started on my plan. Now I don't live far from here myself and I know this is a great area for young families. Put bluntly, it's cheaper than a lot of the other areas around. Even in today's market, houses are still selling, there are still buyers out there. In fact, I found some red-hot properties that were unstoppable when it came to making a sale. Mid-terrace, three bedrooms, close to the station, sold for £209,500. And this unstoppable, two bedrooms, detached garage, sold for £204,700. And end of terrace, three bedrooms, kitchen diner, sold after only three months for £200,000. Despite the slow market, Grove Park's still moving. This is great news for Ron and Betty once Sophie's worked her magic. Betty and Ron's dated house was really putting off their target market, which was the young professionals, so we've had to do something about it. We started by decluttering, and now we've got a blank canvas to work with. The hall carpet, that had to go. We're replacing it with a contemporary carpet, so you get a bright, fresh look when you walk through the front door. Now, the living room. It screamed update me, so we're going to give it a facelift with fresh colour and contemporary accessories. Upstairs, the junk room is going to be transformed into an office. We'll take out the pub carpet and cork walls. And the second bedroom is going to become a proper bedroom with the addition of a double bed. The spotty wallpaper in the second bedroom makes the room look tiny. We're painting it a neutral shade to make it look much bigger, big enough for a double bed. I'm intrigued to find out why any agent would let someone as frail as Betty conduct the tours on her own. Betty has done the 92 viewings of this house herself. I'm pretty staggered. The estate agents get well paid to sell the house, so why is she doing their job for them? I asked her to take me on a tour to show me how she does it. Well, this is our sitting room, and it's quite a warm room. The whole house is double glazed. Right, we've got a kitchen here then. We had it extended. Look by... at this, she's nearly 80. She shouldn't be doing this. This is the bathroom, and we would leave both sheds, obviously. Yep. She put so much effort into it, and she's getting tired already. Used to be my son's bedroom, he had yep. a bed across there. It's master bedroom. Okay. It takes 12 minutes to show me around, and she makes tea for all the viewers. Sometimes she does three viewings a day. She must get exhausted. In my 20 years in the business, I've never seen anything like this. This just isn't on. I'm going to go and talk to her estate agent, Lisa, about why she isn't doing the viewings herself. OK, Betty and Ron's house, yeah, 92 house. viewings. Yeah, Been on the market for a year and a half. Betty very kindly gave me a tour of the house, doing her estate agent routine. You're a professional estate agent. Why is she showing people around? I think she, she does a great job. She knows her property more than anybody else. She's lived there for a number of years. With um, the majority of estate agents, if, if they've got a property on the books where vendors are living there, then the vendors will do, will do the viewings themselves. That's nonsense. I think she'd have a better chance of selling the home if she did the viewings herself. I'm not trying to tug at your heartstrings here, but she's 80 years old mm -hmm. and she was absolutely knackered. You know, don't misunderstand me. If, yes. if, if they want us to do a company of years, then obviously that is what okay. we do. Bingo. That's a relief to me and Betty and exactly what I need to hear. But there's another question that I want to raise. One thing that amazed me going by the house for the first time, there isn't a sale sign there. What are your thoughts on that? Um, Ron and Betty didn't want one. They felt that it might sort of compromise the security of the property. So they decided not to have a board. So, as I said, we'd always, always recommend someone okay. to have a board, but they don't always have one. I'll work on them about the board, because I think it's absolutely crazy if people are driving around not seeing a board there. I can't leave without mentioning the ridiculously high numbers of viewings. 
are they? People are arguing with me, but are they really 92 people who are going to buy that house? Because the... we've all had the experience of estate agents saying, oh, you're looking for a two-bedroom flat, here's a five-bedroom no, house. Is no, that... not at all, no, because it is a numbers game. The more viewings that you have, then the more likely and the more quickly you are to get an offer. Not that old chestnut. I'd wager half of those people weren't looking for that house. Well, Lisa reckons it's all a numbers game. I reckon me and her are just going to have to disagree on the marketing here. But what I am glad about is that she's agreed to do a lot more of the viewings accompanied. Hopefully that will really help to get this property moving. Now here are some tips for you to get your house selling in a difficult market. Make sure your agent is targeting your property at the correct viewers. There's absolutely no point people who want a flat coming around and looking at your three bedroom house. We're not after numbers here. I don't want dozens of people walking through the house. All that's gonna do is wear out your stair carpet. Remember, the estate agent is working for you, not the other way around. You shouldn't be doing the viewings. Let the estate agent do that. They're meant to be the experts after all, and isn't that what you're paying them for? And remember to keep them focused. Selling your house should be their number one priority. If you haven't got a sale board outside your house, why not? Anybody driving by will never know your house is for sale. Remember, around a third of sales are generated from sale boards. When we first met Betty and Ron, they were stuck in their old family terrace when they wanted to be near their newest family members. After 92 viewings, all done by Betty, the property just wasn't selling. But then the Unsellables team stepped in. I'm giving Betty's house a thoroughly new look to get it moving. And I've persuaded the estate agent to do the viewings instead of Betty. When you're selling a house, you're selling a lifestyle, a brand new start for a young family. Never forget, a drop of fresh paint can transform a room quickly and cheaply. As an agent, I know first impressions count. When you walk through the front door and are greeted by an ancient carpet, your heart sinks. So we're putting in a lighter, brighter carpet, which will make the whole entrance more appealing. Make the most of what you've got. If your spare room fits a double bed, then put one in, because some potential buyers have difficulty imagining space, so show them how much they got to play with. We're getting there, but there's still a lot to do. Just time for a quick brew. I think the biggest change and challenge was modernising this house, but there's not much point in me doing all that work in there if we don't get any viewers through the front door. Yeah, and I've had a, a very tough meeting with Lisa, but I think she's finally beginning to get the message and give Betty and Ron a chance to put their feet up for a change. I want to help Ron and Betty market this house, and there's something they could do which will help immensely. You've got a lovely front garden here. There's just one thing that I'd like you to add to it, and that's this. And I don't know how you're going to feel about this, but happen to come across one of these... Well, I don't think my wife worries about it, but I don't particularly like them at all. My experience of buying, of buying houses is that people drive around areas and look for what's for sale. I've seen, you know, children, you know, hurl stones at them, because if they miss, they can do damage to other parts of your property. But I think that's a really, really powerful marketing tool, yeah. if you like. About a third of sales start with people seeing boards. My husband has been against it, but I don't mind. <laughs> what do you reckon? What? In view of what you said, they put the notice board up. Fantastic result. I think it's a good idea. I really okay. do. Now that I've made the house obvious to potential buyers, I want to tackle the instant turn-off next door. This is very frustrating when you're trying to show a house. Look at Betty and Ron's front garden. Absolutely beautiful. But come next door, and what do you get? A council tip in the front garden. If people drive up and see that, they might drive straight on by without stopping. If the state of your neighbour's property is holding up your sale, just speak to them. What we're doing, we're, we're trying to sell this old couple's house yeah. next door. And the problem we've got is they've got a lovely, lovely front garden. Yeah. And people are driving by and yeah. seeing your front garden. Is there any way we can get rid of all this stuff? Yeah, this, my sister's getting it moved in a week, two weeks, something like that. Well, that'd be fantastic. So it's all going to go. Yeah. Fantastic result. If you have got stuff going on like this in your neighbour's garden, 
just have a quiet word, see if they can get it out of the way. They'll be doing you a real favour. That wasn't so hard. With the relaunch around the corner and Agent Lisa working hard to get the right viewers, the pressure's on to make Ron and Betty's home look bang up to date. So many people work from home these days with the internet, so a home office like this is a real selling point. Lighten any dark spots with a strategically placed lamp. After a military plan of attack and a small amount of funds, we've defeated the data decor and turned around this house's fortunes. While Ron and Betty go for a cuppa elsewhere, it's time for me to make sure this property would turn the head of any young family. Ron and Betty's house used to be an unsellable end of terrace. Its selling points were lost beneath clashing colours and patterns with mismatched furniture and its rooms had no clear function. After 16 months on the market, it felt overfilled, overfrilled and outdated. But now it's been teased back into life. The tired old stair carpet used to be the first thing that hit viewers in the eye when they walked in the front door. Not anymore. We've replaced it with a biscuit-coloured one and painted the dated 80s wallpaper with pastel shades. That all-important first impression has been completely transformed. In the living room, too many knick-knacks, colours and patterns vied for attention. Not now. We've simplified the colour scheme by painting the walls cream, adding a neutral rug and fresh white curtains. Now this room feels light and modern. Anyone can imagine themselves living here. The second bedroom gave me spots before my eyes. That's all changed. We've painted over the spotty wallpaper and by decluttering made room for a double bed. The room now feels refreshing like a good night's sleep. The box room served no purpose. It was just a storeroom filled with clutter. Now that's changed. A lick of paint, a new carpet and some inexpensive furniture have transformed it into an office. We've taken this house from an outgrown, outdated family house to a crisp urban residence worthy of any young family and all for under £500. This property is a great example of how, with a limited amount of cash and a lot of hard work, you can really transform any home from unsellable to sellable. I really hope Ron and Betty like it. Oh, well. <laughs> so what do you notice first, Betty? Oh, it all looks very bright and clean and... Yep. Lovely, yeah. I think the new carpet makes oh. a big difference. Oh, it does. Very nice. Well, do you want to come upstairs? Should we take our shoes off or leave them on? Oh, I'll leave them on. Just changing the carpet is such a transformation, Ron is afraid to tread on his own floor. Oh, my goodness me. Come on in, Ron. Oh, it's lovely. Now you've got a nice neutral colour carpet yes. and a nice bright wall. It's it looks new. bigger. It's very nice indeed. Oh, good. I'm so pleased. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so now come on through to the next room. Oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, yes. Ron, come on in. Oh, it's really lovely double bedroom. Unbelievable. Isn't it? Is, yes, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it? And look at all this space. Yeah. You could have a, you could have a dressing right. table, you could have a desk. I'm absolutely delighted. Thank you so much. Not at all. Should we go downstairs? <laughs> One room left. Oh, yes. Come on oh. in. Come on in, Ron. Oh, it looks lovely. <laughs> My goodness I'm me. all because I was oh, a bit yeah. worried. Yes. Oh, no, it really is nice. I just think now it looks a bit more modern. So you're happy? Yes, very happy. very happy. Also gives us a good excuse to leave the photographs down that we didn't want up in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> With Betty and Ron's seal of approval, this house is officially sellable. The house has got a thumbs up from the owners, but will it sell? Time to see if Lisa, the estate agent, thinks that Ron and Betty's house is now more sellable. I think it's fantastic. The improvement is huge. Because it's lighter, it feels more open, it feels more airy, it actually makes it feel more spacious. There's an office now in one of the bedrooms, which I think makes the property a lot more versatile. 
And, as promised, Lisa has organised batch viewings, and she's doing them herself, so that Betty doesn't have to make any more tea for time wasters. And I'm sure you can tell from here, from the smell of brand new yeah. paint, mm -hmm. that this room has just had a complete makeover. Nice. And fair play, she's doing an excellent job at pointing out the refurbishment. So this is the family room. So it's a lovely room. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, good. OK, Rosemary, so this is bedroom number three. Okay. People here are using it as an office. If you did not need it as a bedroom, to just use the whole room yeah. almost as a walk-in wardrobe. Or sleepover room. I'm sure well, that's daughter true. would absolutely yeah, love yeah. that. <laughs> oh, OK, so, so living the area. Lounge, the lounge, yep, that's right. And I can visualise a table, maybe that side. I could yeah. probably use that as dining. I can tweak it, yeah. <laughs> make it work. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> Good job, Lisa. She's already mentally moving in. So, has this house now got sale appeal? So, if you're keen, then the vendors would be open to offers as well. I am definitely interested. I'll be getting back in touch. Yeah, yeah. good. Great. We're getting closer, Lisa. Well, the new decor went down well with buyers, so hopefully some of them will come back with a solid offer. Brilliant. And if it helps the agents swing the right type of buyers their way, then Betty and Ron can soon be looking at their dream bungalow. It's been four weeks since we've left and things have definitely improved. Lisa, the agent, has worked hard to deliver six potential buyers. They're now the right people who are genuinely interested in Ron and Betty's home. All the tours are now grouped together and accompanied by the agent. I think Ron and Betty are much closer to making their move to be with their families.